Welcome to the channel everyone, this is Hardware Despair. My name is Ryan and we are playing Dwarf Fortress. And let's get right into it. Okay, well I've got my world generated here, it's fully created. And I went down here to the finding uh, the results. Uh, well, it says clear find results, but at the time it says you can search for certain criteria you want in your world. And what I did was I listed, uh, we wanted Fluxstone layer, yes. I went with no aquifers just to make life easier. We do want a river, again, if we have no aquifers, we'll want the water early on, so it's helpful. And of course, we've got deep soil, clay, sand, all available. And the only metal that I really specified was iron. Uh, gold, silver, those things are all bonuses. You know, if we get a mixture of these, that's fine. I just want to make sure we have some iron. And I allowed it. I gave it time and painted the whole world. Uh, and eventually it came up with these results here. These yellow squares now have uh, the desired criteria if we go in here. So the red areas are going to be their little... Uh, get rid of that yeah there we go these are uh, other settlements obviously so uh, I'm gonna search around the world look for my preferred areas I basically what I'm looking for now once we've got these uh, my desired locations here I want to find a good set of neighbors I want to make sure we have elves humans and goblins as neighbors so I'm gonna look around find something decent here and we'll be right back once I found a good embark location Okay, I think I found a pretty decent embark location right over here. Now, I have reduced the size of my starting map to a 3x3, three three, just to kind of help for lag a little bit, late game, things like that. Um, I know in the original version, lag can be a really kill, a really big uh, issue later on in the game, so smaller maps help with that. If I could go back, I would probably select a smaller world, but I just did. This world is just totally vanilla. I didn't change any parameters or anything. I just generated the standard world. Uh, but a smaller world can also help a little bit, especially it'll help with the creation time too. Because it can take a while, especially on slower machines. So what we've got here is a decent site. The only thing is, if we look down here, this spot is wilderness, where if we go a little bit higher, it's calm. So just for my first, you know, fortress here, I want, in, since I haven't played in several years, uh, since the original version, but um, I want a calm surrounding. So we are going to have like just the southern edge of our territory is going to be in wilderness here this green square uh we're because we're going to go up to this point i think is probably pretty decent we've got everything we want here including some good neighbors um now there is a big old goblin settlement just below us these on either side are dwarven settlements but down here some serious goblin strongholds so essentially we're kind of on the front lines here all right let's see yep we're gonna go with this very good. Now, I'm also going to prepare carefully for this journey. I'm going to set up all the skills. Mainly, I'll go through and I'll show you what I'm going to do with my uh, dwarves here. You know, animals and items are pretty, that's up to you, you know, especially the animals. They're not as important. I will probably show you my items list, but, uh, and we'll go a quick run through the, once uh, I set all the animals too. But dwarves are really the most important in my mind if you're going to do this and if you don't want to just do a random start. So let me get everything set up and I'll show you what I end up with. Okay, you guys. Now, first, I just want to say a little disclaimer. I'm not an expert at Dwarf Fortress. I did play it many years ago for a long time back then, but um, it's been a while. I've never played the Steam version. I practiced a little bit. I did get a few hours of practice just to learn the layout of buttons and stuff, but I still will struggle. Everything I'm going to do is just my own style of gameplay. If you guys have comments or constructive criticism, please feel free to leave it in the comments because I will incorporate all that into my playthroughs. And I'm not you know guaranteeing we'll survive too in fact we'll probably die <laughs> pretty quickly but we're going to just keep going on if that happens we'll just start again and learn from our lessons so let's quickly go through with the layout here i recommend you take your time here if you're going to do this take your time go through it and really consider what's going on like i said try and learn from your past deaths but anyway so the first one i always go for actually the first two are very similar they're both going to be miners now i always start them off with a very low mining skill just one or two points there. Um, one quick note on how to see what you've got. Instead of trying to read, like not, 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 look for the, trying to pick out the words here, look over to the right and see whichever has the highlighted minus symbol. Then you know you've got uh, points in that skill. Here, let me go to the other tab. Yeah, see, you can, if you see the, if you look at the minus column, you can see where all his points are distributed because that's where you can take points away. So that's just a quick tip on how to 
look through these columns. One of the best ways I've found. Anyway, so we've got a miner. I set them low because they're going to get tons of practice. They don't need to come into the map like super good miners because they will become super good miners. But in addition to the mining skill, we go to the other tab because this guy is our persuader negotiator. So he's going to tr initiate trade deals. He's also our organizer manager. And if we scroll all the way down, do, 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 I've also got leader marked for this gentleman. So he has many hats. He's a miner. <clears throat> he's the leader of the colony, the manager, and he's going to be the negotiator. Now, early on, all those skills are crucial, but we can fill them with other dwarves as we get better, you know, dwarves showing up. But for now, we need somebody to fill all those roles. So the second guy is going to also be a miner. And the crucial skill, very novice at it, but in addition, he is our doctor. So all his other skill points have gone into wound dressing, diastetician, uh, surgeon, uh, didn't put anything in much in bone doctor, uh, maybe a little bit, and suturer, because this guy, that's basically it. He's just a novice miner, and he's our doctor. Pretty important. Okay, so the third guy is our boop, 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 crucial skills. He's our woodcutter. So his skills have basically gone to woodcutting, carpentry, and if we scroll down, you'll see woodcrafting down here too. Now, one little tip, this is just kind of the old lore. I'm not sure how true this is, but uh, one thing I always like to do with my, my cutting or my woodcutting dwarf is to make him an axe dwarf because I think, I don't know if those skills cross over, but it's good, you know. He's basically your first military dwarf in my colony. But another thing I've heard is that you want to make your tree cutter somewhat good at dodging because I have had it happen that a you know, dwarf will get injured cutting down trees because it will fall on top of them. So I've always put one point into dodging to try and avoid that. Uh, so make your tree cutter also good at dodging. Now, the next guy here, let's go to the crucial skills, is for all based around the stone. So he's our mason. He's a competent mason. He's also a stone cutter, stone crafter. And that's it. I don't think I put points in anything else. Oh, no, no, I did. He's an herbalist. So herbalist is a good skill, too, because early on for him, he's kind of kind of be standing around until we get the stone buildings or the stone workshop up and running. So I'm going to have him collecting herbs out there with the farmers. Uh, speaking of farmers, those are the next two dwarves. So the first guy is a brewer. Mainly he's a brewer. You need a good brewer. More than a cook, you need a brewer. So I've got him set as butcher, adequate planter, which is farmer, and he's a proficient brewer. Now I think I might have set some other skills. Let me just double check. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We've got him as threshing and as herbalist. So he'll, again, he'll go out there and collect seeds and nuts early on um, in case we run out of plump elements or something. And threshing is basically like... Um, processing plants so you can get fibers and stuff from different plants later on it's just something he can do at the farmer's workshop uh, so as the next farmer or planter as they call him he is basically just a skilled planter and he's also going to be an herbalist a cook i've got him cheese making and milking too so he can kind of help pro help with some of the animals now he's not shearing or spinning or any of that we'll wait for later dwarves to join us before we do that and the last guy is the blacksmith slash mechanic he's kind of a jack of all traits so he's got the mechanic skill he can make mechanisms for us early on he's also got weapon he'll, he'll make bows armor blacks and he's very novice at all this stuff this is just kind of to fill in gaps until we get like really proficient people he's also novice metal crafter so like i said it's mainly um, around the metals and the uh, mechanics now quick overview of the animals nothing special here oops here they are over here two three dogs three cats four hens three ducks got a couple of buffalo here we can milk you know the female also the alpaca we can milk and make cheese with but we get to shear those as well and the tent you know the turkeys i kind of keep it pretty slim on this but uh these, we have breeding pairs for all these, so eventually we'll get more animals. And, you know, as uh, settlers come in, they bring animals with them. But uh, anyway, the items might be the most controversial thing for any embarkation, what you want to bring along with you. I tend to take off quite a few things that they initially start you with. You know, I just focus in on two different kinds of um, crops in our farm, the plump helmets and the dimple spawn. 
I, t- I tend to really, really go heavy on the drinks just to give myself some leeway if something happens and we can't get our you know, drinks up and running or if there's a delay. We've got food and drinks for a good long while. And that's about it. I, you know, like I reduce a lot of this stuff and just throw it into the food, mainly food and drinks. Um, we got one battle axe and two picks, most important, you know, don't forget the tools. Oh, and also the anvil. That's something pretty much you're going to need because you can't process metal without an anvil. So to make anvils, you need an anvil. So always bring that with you. Anyway, that's it guys. So we are going to embark. All right, here we are at the map screen, and we get the little message here. I'll let you read that if you'd like. And let's go. So oop, I've already got this here. So you can see this first option. I'm going to turn it off mainly, but this just gives you an indication of which way the slopes are going here. This is a kind of throwback to the old style, but you can turn that off right up here by the mini map. You'll see the little triangle. And I'm going to turn that off. Now here's our wagon. And we've got a bunch of trees around here. Here's the, uh, I'm going to actually pull out a little bit using the bracket. Oops, that was in. Yeah, I'm going to pull out using the bracket key so we can kind of see our map. Pretty small, but that's okay. You know, because most of my construction goes up and down vertically. I'm a pretty up vertical builder. Uh, I'm going to keep it paused though. Whoops, didn't mean to do that. All right, so I want to zoom back in a little bit. Yeah, you're going to see me mess up control commands quite a bit, but uh, we're getting used to it together, so please, love it. I love getting new uh, games like this, and uh, Dwarf Fortress is one of the most challenging to learn, but it is very rewarding once you get the hang of it. So first things first, let's get a few orders done. I'm going to have some tree chopping done. Do, do, do. We'll just get this section right here, and as you can see now, all these little stumps here are marked. If we go up a Z level or two, oh, I'm sorry. Yeah, you'll see that these are trees. Here's the leaves and stuff as we go up. You can see the canopy. And I will zoom back down to ground level. Now, what a lot of people tend to do is they'll find a mount or a hill or a mountain like this and they'll dig into it and build like a big layout, like right all here. I build vertically, so you'll see that here. What I like to do is find a nice flat surface like this area right over here. And I'm going to build a single entrance way. We're going to use a stair here. I'm gonna go with the stair first thing. Now my goal when I'm picking out the initial location is where can I build walls, a nice size fortress, you know? So I wanna have walls up eventually, not right away. That's a bigger project for later on. But so I'd say, oh, this gives me about enough room right here. So this will be the entrance. And I'm gonna use my C and E keys to go up and down my Z level here. You can also use the mouse wheel, but I, it, when I'm building like this, I prefer the C and E key. So I'm gonna bring it down one level. Okay, now we've got one stairway coming down a level. Now what I like to do, once I get uh, off the surface, I'm gonna expand this a little bit. I like to make a uh, three by three eventually, but for now, just for starters, to give our miners a little break here, we're just gonna do this one by three. And I'm gonna go down, I don't know, like five or six here. Five or six levels, just so we have um, Plenty of Z, Z levels to play with here. So we're going to go back up. <laughs> All right. Now, before I unpause, I'm going to set up a few more commands here. Let's do some plant gathering. So similar to the uh, tree cutting, I'll just have them do it right around our spawn location. Good, good, good. Also, I'm going to set up a couple zones here. We want a pen and pasture for those buffalo and the alpaca that we have. I'm going to put it right here, right basically the entrance. Everything's gonna kind of be centered around this location here. So we're gonna put that there. Can I expand it? Yep. Okay. Yeah, I'm gonna close. I'm gonna start trying to remember to close those things permanently. Um, all right, so we've got that. Let's accept it. Now let's add some animals to this. I will add the dogs. Now I'll tell you why in a second. Not the cats, again, I'll, I'll tell you. Oops, also the birds are not gonna go in there. It's basically just for the dogs, the water buffalo, and the alpaca. Now the hens, they're gonna have their own little room underground with like nest boxes and stuff. And the cats will be stationed in our stockpile area so that they can hunt vermin and stuff. The dogs are gonna be up here in the pasture, not because they need food up here, but because they can kind of guard the entrance. Anybody who's gonna try to sneak in, is gonna have to get through this, the, our three dogs here right at the entrance way. And that will happen. <laughs> so anyway, that's set. That's set. We can just exit out of that. I believe the dwarves will start moving the animals over there. They should at least. Let's see here. 
Yeah, there they go. Starting to move the animals. Perfect. So we know that's that's in place. Now, before we let them work a little bit long, um, more, let's set a stockpile. Normally, I don't like stockpiles on the surface, but just initially, so we have a nice little place to put all this wood. We're going to set this as a wood stockpile only. So I'm going to accept it. Then I'm going to come down here to wood, and that's what I want, just the wood. So the, And I'm, I probably should expand it, too, actually. So let's go in here and hit the repaint the stockpile. Make it just a little bit bigger, because there's going to be a lot of wood on the map initially as we drop all these big old trees down. So that looks good. Now, let me. what I'm going to do next is I'm going to go down some Z levels and start laying out the different levels I want. But that's kind of a long, boring process. So I'm going to do that real quick, and I'll show you guys what I end up with. Oh, real quick before I get started, guys, uh, just another quick tip here. This is something I learned. I think this was a mod in the original game. Maybe not. Maybe it was part of the base game. But um, anyway, when you're digging like this, if you select your dig option, you can go up here and start going around. Or if you do that, go over here to advanced options. And this stuff over here, I'm not going to go through just yet, but the numbers here allows you to set the priority. So I'm going to say, okay, this is the highest priority for my miners, this little section here that I'm going to specify so I want this to be mined immediately. And if we look, if we zoom in a little bit, yeah, you can see that there's a one by each of these little mining jobs. If I go in and set this area, let's say, okay, I want this to be mined at a four priority right here. Then you can see there's a four by it. So the, the miners will start this one first. And later on, after they've gone through the twos and threes, they'll get to the fours. So that's a really great handy option. All right, you guys. Well, I've done uh, some laying out here of my mining. I haven't let them start yet. I wanted to show it to you first. But uh, another quick tip, and there's going to be many of these, and I hope you guys will share your tips with me too. But um, up here and by the mini map, you'll see this black box with the X in it. If you hit this, this allows you to select hotkeys and assign hotkeys for certain areas on your map. So right now you start with the default of being uh, F1 will recenter you on the wagon, but I've changed it to recenter me right here on my entrance now, because eventually we're going to get rid of this wagon. Uh, so I want my number one F1 spot to be right here. F2, I've set it down here. F3 is this location. F4 is here. So now instead of going to Z levels, changing like the Z levels like that, I can just hit F1 through whatever. And that's up here. So it's very easy actually to do this. Go to the location. You can actually center it with your, if you hold down your mouse wheel and kind of drag it around, you can get exactly where you want it to be. Come to this button and it says set this entry to recenter on the current view. Click that and you're good to go. And you can just go right down to your next level. You don't need to close this, this uh, window at all. Just go down to whatever you want, you want to be F2 and click that. And you can even name them and stuff. So it's very helpful. Uh, anyway, let's go back to the surface. Now let's go through my digging that I've done. <laughs> Most important for any dwarf is to understand his digging. All right, so this is the first level directly below the ground level here and it's most likely hopefully going to be soil I haven't tested this yet so if it's if it's stone we might be in some problems but we'll find soil hopefully this is soil because we're going to have our um, farms up here and then across the hall this is our little hallway three wide we're going to have like our butcher well maybe not the butcher shop but we'll have the farm and the cheese processing and the brewery and stuff we'll put down in here this is actually a dumping zone i don't like to i like to try and be as self-sufficient underground as possible so eventually what i'd like to do one day is to be able to just lock down the compound and not have to go outside at all um, in case the worst have, the worst comes to worst, you know, and we get some sort of crazy titan enemy comes on the map, you know, we can just lock down. So I don't do dumping stuff on the surface. Um, we will try and put it all here. So let's go to F2. So this is dumping, farms, and workshops. And we'll go to F3. Sorry, F3. Uh, this is just a hallway, so just ignore this. I've just got this branching off. And these things are prioritized. If we go in here and look, I've got different priorities set for each one of these. So the, the dwarves know what they're supposed to be doing. So this is actually going to be our stockpile area. I'm going to put all the general items from the wagon and stuff we get. And we'll expand this later. This whole this will become a big stockpile area. And on this side of the stairwell, we're going to do workshops. So I've just got the hallway branching 
starting off for now, but eventually I'll do workshops up here and stuff, you know, so on either side. It'll all start to shape up in time, just giving you the preliminary outlook. Below it, we've got what is going to be a couple of offices. Again, we got a hallway here. I always go three wide hallways. A um, couple of offices for our manager and anybody else who might need one. Um, so we get the offices ready. Those are pretty important or else your manager won't be able to like assign duties and stuff. And this is going to be our hospital over here. Now, another quick thing is if I go right up to the top, where the heck's the top? There it is. You'll see the rivers right here, okay? So my plan with this is, and I haven't connected it yet because I'm not exactly sure where I want it, but this is going to be our underground water source. I'm going to dig a tunnel from this. Well, I'm going down. <laughs> I'm going to dig a tunnel from below the river here. I'm going to come below it, and I'll go through this in a future episode. Probably won't happen today, but we're going to let the river flow into an underground cistern that we're going to dig out here so we can fish, collect water from here. And I've got it situated right next to the hospital because water is important for your dwarves to be clean and stuff like that. So uh, that's what this, this floor is about. As I said, I'm a very vertical builder, so let's go down to... Is it F4? No, it's F5 is the next one. This is going to be our barracks sleeping arrangement. Initially, we'll start with a barracks. Again, hallways and barracks. Now, this is going to have the beds in it right away, but I will make individual bedrooms eventually once we get more people here and have more labor. But um, this is just going to be our early barracks. Eventually, we'll probably turn it into like a, a worshiping temple or maybe a, maybe a bar or something. Anyway, let's hit pause and get started so I can see what I've forgotten to do. <laughs> Uh, there's always stuff you, you forget, man. There's like a very long checklist of things you got to do starting off, but it's part of the fun is the preparation, you know, and you do become a lot more skilled at it, a lot more adept at uh, what you need. Okay. So we can see the, the trees are coming down already. Our little chopping dwarf. Let's, let's follow one of our miners. I know there used to be a way to follow dwarves. Okay. Here's our dwarf list. I know we can zoom to them. What does this say? Leave the menu and recenter on this creature. Leave the menu and view this creature's sheet. Now we want to recenter on this bad boy. Here we go. What's up, little miner? So let's. What what is this floor? It's a sandy clay. Okay, perfect. I believe yes, we can. We should be able to plant um, our our farm plots down here on this sandy clay. So that's pretty perfect. Let me go in here and look. This is set to a six. Good. What I want next is my stockpile. I think I'm gonna set that to a two. Yeah, we'll, we'll bump that up. I want that to be like big time priority because we want the stockpile. We want everything to get underground here, especially once we get our uh, farm up and going. Yeah. Okay, so he's digging that out. I wish he would have finished this first here, buddy. Hold on, let's give this a priority. Where's our other miner, I wonder? Wait, did I just give that a one or a four? I think it says one. Okay, it's hard for me to see it. All right, yeah, he'll go back in there and clear that little room. So I want to go ahead and just lay down our farm plots immediately. All right, perfect. So now we're going to go into place structures. Um, I believe it's, is it workshops? I have, to, I have to search for it. Farming, farm plot. Yeah, so it's under workshops. Select a tile to be the corner of the farm plot. Select the material. Keep building after placement. Okay, so what I like to do is do vertical rows like that. Now we'll we'll go back in here. There's okay, so it's B. There's a string of hotkeys we can do real quick to get to it. So let's let's map that out in our heads here. It's going to be B, O, F, B O F to get to the farm plot. Okay, because I'm going to do several of these layers. So B O F, and then I can just hit the farm plot. It's good to do these individually. I could do the whole room, but then you can only plant one thing in here. By doing strips like this, I can have each strip dedicated to its own type. We only have two right now, but we might get more in the future. So I'm going to do this, B, O, F, and farm plot. There's also a hotkey for the farm plot, but that's one too many for me to remember. So this is how the old door fortress used to be played. You just basically had to remember like strings of hotkeys. So you could access stuff really quickly. And it became intuitive. It became like muscle memory after a while. Okay, so now we can go in here and... Oh, we have to wait for it to be constructed. That's right. So this is just the blueprints. Now if I hit space, the farmers will start to come down here. And actually like till this soil or whatever. Yeah, yeah, very nice. And they're working on it. Perfect. 
Look at this. We've got wood sitting in the stairs right there. Do you see that? That's why I like to do a large staircase. I usually go three by three, like, but it seems like that's a bit much for starting. So we're just doing one by three, but eventually, yeah, you're going to need a big, especially if you build on the vertical like this. If you lay it all out in one or two Z levels, it's not so important, but I like to have my whole fortress basically get centered around this one very large stairwell. All right, let's look for our other miner. I feel like this dude's slacking off. Where are you, buddy? So we've got this miner right there. Where's the other one? Dig, no job, dig, planter, brewer, blacksmith, stonecutter, carpenter, peasant. Wait, is this him? Overview. See, this is right already. We're running into stuff here. Fisher dwarf. What? Is that it? I'm pretty sure this was the guy's skills. Yeah, he's our doctor. Novice miner. He wants to go. He wants to go a fishing. I'm sorry, buddy. So we're not going to do that. So you saw I did that. I went to labor. We'll do available tasks anywhere. And yeah, this guy needs to be mining. Where is he? I think I just lost him again. There he is. Just out here wandering around. Is this him? Yeah, that's him. All right, so let's see. Make sure. Okay, he's probably going to head off and grab a pick. You silly head. I still see the pick laying there, though. I don't know. We'll see. Well, let's let's give him a few moments. Sometimes it takes these dwarves a little bit of time to figure out what you want them to do. All right, so. Okay, perfect. He's coming down here and help it. Gorgeous, gorgeous. Yep, see, you gotta, gotta watch it. Okay, so now we've got all these plots opened up. Let's get our food set. We've got dimple cups and plump helmets. Now, it's important to notice that we've got different seasons listed, so we want to go in here. Basically, I'm going to set this. Fertilize every season. I'm just wondering. I think we have to go in and click it for each season. Thought maybe there was a way to avoid that, but that's okay. Uh, let's make it all the same here. Come on now. Dimple cups for this row. And now I'll go into the next one and I'll set all these for the different kinds we've got. Okay, I've got them all set. Now, one thing I'm noticing is it's kind of hard to figure out where exactly the rows start and stop here, especially in the middle. So you might want to dig yourself extra space and like skip rows so you can see there's blankness in there. And then another thing, and I remember doing this in the base game, I would also then lay down a stockpile in the blank spaces between for like seeds and stuff. But anyway, uh, probably maybe adjust that later on once we get going a little bit further. But uh, that's good. So let's play some workshops. Now this level is just for like food processing stuff in a brewery. So I'm not going to put like stone or wood construction up here. That's for lower levels. Let's go into workshops. And we want farming. And first things first, the still. Most important for all dwarves here. Uh, we'll just do it out whatever's closest, whatever wood is available. Uh, let's set another workshop. We're going to just load this place up here with, we'll put the butchers up upstairs or outside, or maybe I'll put one, a small room adjacent to the dumping stockpile because the butcher can release uh, miasma gas. All right. So in addition, we'll do, where is, oh, the kitchen is what I want. Put that there. Yeah, put that right there. It's not perfectly... I didn't dig this out perfectly, but that's okay. It's going to be off by one, but no big deal. We'll do one more workshop here for this area, and that's going to be the farmer's workshop. So we have a still. Yeah, there's a gap there. That's okay. Um, we have a still. We have the kitchen and a farmer's workshop. So this is where we'll take like animals to milk them, to shear their wool, and things like that. So those are all critical. All right. And as you can see, it's right across from the farm plot. It's also very close to the surface which is important. If you got your animals up here on the surface, that's important. Eventually, as we find caverns below, or if we can get uh, like mushrooms and stuff to grow underground here, we might be able to bring our grazing animals below ground uh, too. So that's something to consider. And like I said, that's my goal. And my personal goal in these colonies is to always uh, make myself totally self-sufficient underground. And it's doable. It's completely possible. So yeah. It's worth it. Now, the first thing we need to think about in terms of security is getting a hatch made for this little stair. One of the reasons I only I don't do like six stair entrances to the surface, we just have one, is so I can close it off with the hatch. So let me hit F3. Yeah, okay, so this is where we're gonna set up our like stone um, 
siltstone cavern floor. I'd like to know what kind of floor we're working with. So this is our stockpile, and then over here was going to be the workshops and stuff. So we'll set up our stone cutter, and he's going to make us a hatch cover over here. I'm going to make this... Priority number three, because I actually want them to come over here after they get the stockpile room cut out, and we're going to start on a workshop. It's not going to be huge right away. Don't want to start like overwhelming my miners too much, but so we'll put our like stone cutter and carpenter right here just for now. Uh, we'll expand it and stuff later on. <clears throat> All this early game stuff, you really just kind of got to slap it down and get it going. Uh, because there's so many there's so many things that you just need crucial you know what I'm saying all right so you can see now this is where like having novice miners kind of comes into play when you start they're slow they're very slow you got to kind of wait when they get into the stone layers but they do get better you know and eventually these two will be the best miners in the whole thing they'll be you know legendary miner level <laughs> uh, but you know let's see what we got going on up top looking good um, these, these counts up here are food, drinks. These are all rough estimates because our organizer hasn't uh, had a chance to sit down in his office and count everything yet. So it's kind of hard to judge early on, but we just got to know that, hey, you know, I, I sent the colony with a whole bunch of food, so we should be good for a season or two. Uh, now, one thing I'd like to know is why they haven't actually started to come down here and... It says no seeds, but that's not right. No seeds, no seeds. Huh. Got to figure out why it's telling me there's no seeds there. First things first, I do want to get some drinks going from plant. There we go. Oh, requires empty food storage item. Okay, so we're going to need some barrels too. That's another thing too I probably should have embarked with were a couple of barrels. Because now you can see it's limiting my ability to produce stuff initially right off the bat. Here, we can still have them um, come down here and milk animals. So... I could set that for infinite, or at least until the order gets canceled because there aren't any more. But uh, yeah, we'll get into all the uh, how to set up the orders, work orders and stuff later on once our manager room gets uh, dug out and stuff. But man, oh man, guys, a half hour has really flown by. I appreciate you guys stopping by, but this is the end of our first episode for Dwarf Fortress. We've only just cracked the ground, but I really appreciate it. Uh, I hope you guys love the game as much as I do. Hit like and subscribe if you enjoy the content. Check out the description for Twitter and Discord links down there. And come back tomorrow, guys, because I'm going to have a brand new episode up, and I will see you then.